Hi, beautiful people. How are you? I hope you're having a great day. Well, as you can see, I'm finally working on this area back here. I mean, it's been raining so much. And prior to that, it was just horrifically hot. So I had to start working on things indoors. And I thought it's time to get to working on my background back here. So that's what I've been doing. It's going to take a little bit of time. I, I can only seem to handle so much per day and then I need to rest, but it'll get there eventually. Is there anyone out there who hasn't heard of the ketogenic diet? I mean, we call it the keto diet. There isn't an abundance of studies on the keto diet and fibromyalgia, but evidence is suggesting that it can work for many of us. So today let's explore this topic. Here we go. Let me first start off with there isn't one single diet that works for everyone. And that is no different than for people with fibromyalgia. Symptoms of fibromyalgia include chronic widespread pain, tenderness, fatigue, sleep issues, difficulty with memory and concentration, we call fibrofog, and stiffness, among so many other symptoms. But for some people, keto is efficacious. Patients lose weight quickly and A1C and blood sugar levels normalize or lower. And I also found that for me, my cholesterol levels lowered and became normal. That seems odd because you're eating all these high fat foods on keto, but it's the low carb and moderate protein content that I think does the trick. The keto diet causes the body to enter a state of ketosis in which the body's fat stores are used for energy since the intake of carb is so low. Not only has research shown that fibromyalgia symptoms improve dramatically, on a low carb or ketogenic diet, but also people with epilepsy and autism spectrum disorder. Fibromyalgia research indicates that we're not able to metabolize sugars and other carbs normally. So our brain cells and all over the body cells crave energy, do they not? With the fatigue that people with fibromyalgia experience, it's no wonder that sugary foods are craved. Glucose is the brain's primary fuel under normal conditions, but we're in a constant state of deficit, so we have trouble meeting our energetic needs. This results in exhaustion, pain, poor sleep, and fibro fog. This vicious triangle of poor sleep, exacerbating pain, and creating cognitive issues create energetic deficits due to the metabolic underlying conditions. This is according to Dr. Shelley Tremblay. In a 2004 study, researchers explained that food cravings are defined as an intense desire to eat a specific food and is of interest because it influences obesity or nutritional status. We can crave all kinds of foods using fMRI, functional magnetic resonance imaging, an activation effect on both behavioral and fMRI measures were achieved. Cravings activated the hippocampus, insula, and caudate. The same areas involved in drug craving. Cravings are powerful. In a 2016 study by Bell, Shelley Tremblay, and Christensen, these researchers found that carbohydrates and high-fat cravings play a unique role in the cognitive impairment of people with fibromyalgia. 28 various food items, including the following categories, general food cravings, carbohydrates, 
sweets, high fat, and fast food were rated on a scale. Interestingly, sweets and fast food fat cravings were not associated with fibrofog, but physical impact was found to be significantly and positively associated with carbohydrate cravings, as well as negative mood. And general food cravings were positively and significantly correlated with fibrofog severity. It's assumed that high fat foods, which normally contain high carbs, may be the reason that craving high fat is associated with fibrofog. There appears to be a correlation there. I do find cognitive impairment due to carb cravings interesting. I recently did that video on ADHD and fibromyalgia, and according to the internet, the best diet for ADHD and fibro is low carb and removing simple sugars. Not saying there's a direct tie, just saying it's all very interesting. Also, as I discovered on my weight loss journey, it was important for me to stop eating sweets. In that study, they found that the highest craving of obese people was sweets. Hmm, not surprising. But I do want to acknowledge that even though people craved certain foods, it doesn't say they ate those foods. They craved them. I'm sure there was some indulgence, though. I mean, I'll occasionally crave sugary food now and again, but I don't indulge except on the rare occasion now. Like my granddaughter's graduation party, bad, bad, bad. So I'm on the warpath again to stay away from sugar. I wasn't craving sugar. It was there, so I ate it, just being honest. But my cravings now are not sugary foods. It's popcorn and butter-flavored coconut oil, both considered to be keto-friendly foods, so that's good. You just have to monitor how much coconut oil you eat. So the brain craves energy to work. We don't need to eat refined sugars and grains to get energy. Since we don't metabolize carbs and sugars normally, we need to find other ways to feed our brain. The brain does use glucose as its primary fuel under normal conditions, but Consuming carbs and having high blood sugar can create lethargy in people with fibro. So, in a 2008 study, researchers stated that people with fibromyalgia often craved and often consumed carbohydrates to try to manage their moods and give themselves an energy boost. I remember saying and doing just that. So this is where it gets good. Researchers had participants fast for 8 to 12 hours and fed them a big dose of a super sugar food, Kool-Aid mixture. The women expected to feel better. Their blood glucose was recorded and mood assessed using a mood scale. The researchers recorded the electrical activity in certain brain areas using electric electroencephalography, or EEG. Instead of the women becoming calm, their anger and hostility levels increased in sync with their elevated sugar levels, blood sugar levels. And soon after, instead of getting an energy boost, they felt frustrated and lethargic, and many didn't metabolize the sugar well. Wow. In a study in 2013, researchers looked at the dietary patterns in women with fibro over time. They found that high carbs and sugar intake was linked to reduce quality of life and increased sugar intake was associated with increased severity of pain. So it's all very convincing, is it not? What do you think? In another 2013 study on the effects of a non-ketogenic low-carb diet on people with fibromyalgia, researchers fed them the diet for three to four weeks, and they found that participants had less dysphoria, meaning less unhappiness or dissatisfaction, more energy, and decreased fibromyalgia symptoms when measuring pain and inflammation, mood, 
energy levels and confusion were lessened. Improved daily function and daily symptoms resulted. This doesn't surprise me. Does it you? So is this dietary intervention something that you've tried? Does it work for you? For me, I do much better on this type of diet, a low-carb, non-keto diet. But if you want to lose weight fast, the keto diet definitely works. There are some of you who can do the keto diet long-term, and I look up to you. I did it for four months and lost Close to 30 pounds, that was pretty good because dieting is hard and the keto diet is no exception. But I found for me, a low carb diet helps to maintain my weight. If I stray from a low carb diet, I will gain weight. For me, it's less than 50 grams of carbs a day. On keto, you usually need to be under 30 grams to get into ketosis. So in 2023, researchers explored the ketogenic diet on obese people with fibromyalgia. A very low calorie keto diet was introduced for four weeks. Patients ate protein and vegetables. Then carbs were gradually introduced and weight loss was maintained. A 14% improvement in fibromyalgia symptoms is considered a minimally clinically important difference. But here's what happened. Three time points were observed. In this study, there was an 89% reduction in patient symptoms at T4, 72% at T8, and 78% at T20. T4 is the first four weeks. T8 was four weeks later. They ate a low glycemic index food plan. And at T20, it's eating a high glycemic index foods. The average daily caloric intake was 1400 kcal with a macronutrient ratio of 48% carbs, 28% fat, and 5% of that was saturated, 20% proteins, and 4% fibers. But they discovered that BMI was not correlated with symptom improvement. That's interesting. It's believed that ketosis might exert beneficial effects in fibro, which extend beyond the promotion of rapid weight loss. So again, what do you think? I plan to do a quick and simple video next on the foods that you can eat and shouldn't eat on the keto diet. And then you can judge for yourself how much you want to put your trust in this diet. I do love eating low carb. I feel better. I have more energy. I think the the biggest issue with the keto diet for me was lethargy. I was so tired after, I don't know, four to six weeks, then I started feeling better. But man, that first, at least four weeks, some people say two weeks, I guess we're all different. You'll get past that. But how does it work for you? I hope you learned something. I send you gentle hugs and support. Love you.